Oh, and we lost Karen. So that's Karen <laughs> Yankovich. Welcome to our world. I am Christina Daves, and this is Get Seen, Be Heard. And we're so excited, Sandra, to have you here today. Um, Karen and I joked when she first met you because we're both a little starstruck because we were another world fans back in the oh, day. Gosh. <laughs> and she said, oh, I met Sandra Dean Anderson. I'm like, why do I know that name? So for those of you on who may not know her, Sandra, she is a television host. She was a television uh, soap opera actress. I don't know anyone other than Another World. That's what I remember you from. Well, I've done, it, it, at this point, more soap operas are on my resume that are actually still on air. So I'm starting to feel a little old. Oh, that's okay. But yeah, um, I actually was, uh, I started, my, my first big national job as an actress was Another World. So I, yeah. I, that was my first introduction to the business in itself. But I started, I spent a lot of time on that show. I started, was there for six years and left and then came back. So I was there for a total of nine years. But I also did um, Sunset Beach, Bold and Beautiful, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives. And then most recently, a bunch of us ten folks got together for a new media show called The Bay, which um, won Emmy. We were nominated for two years in a row as well. So um, yeah, that, that was cool. It was, it's, it was fun. Very fun. So we'll yeah. let you do like your, your formal intro, but I just kind of wanted to give people the little <laughs> the star power. But who better than to have you talk about charisma on camera? Uh, but when we start, and I'm hoping Karen comes back soon, we, we have had problems getting bumped out. Um, we always like to share a little something about our industry, you know, to kind of help people who are watching. Um, so I will share with you guys today, I am a Vistage speaker. If you guys know what Vistage is, it's a big corporate um, community of CEOs. And I went today to talk about PR and DIY PR. And there was a guy there, rock star, rock star, and it's everything I tell you guys every week. He's an attorney, and every time there's business breaking news, he is on Fox Business. And he was on for the VW scandal. He was on just this past week for the gambling, and um, it just amazing that that's you know he's got it. He figured it out. So whatever your expertise is, and I think that was one of the questions there. The best way is to establish yourself as an expert. And with that kind of stuff, with breaking news, you've got your credentials, you know, send in those emails and follow up with a phone call. And the more they see you talking about these stories, you know, give them a good quote, show them your credibility, you can get on things like Fox News regularly. And, and I don't know, Sandra, if you do any kind of other stuff like that, um, you know, get your own publicity. I mean, obviously, you know television, but yeah. As an expert. I, I turned to, when it comes to helping people get publicity, I turn them on to people like you, Christine. Okay. So I, I, I yeah, I, it's, it's just too much for me to wrap my head around. You know, um, I actually need someone like you. So <laughs> what happens is that I work like you would find somebody that wants to do it and gets a little uneasy in front of the camera. And then, then I work with your client is usually how it works. Or I send my people to you when they're ready. Right, which is awesome. And, and yeah. that is, I, you know, and I told them that today, you know, so many people want to be on the Today Show and Good Morning America and CNN. You, you have to start local and you have to become somewhat polished because the Today Show is not going to risk putting an expert on their show mm -hmm. that has never been on television before. Um, oh, Very sorry. true. Karen is texting me. She's like, unlock the seat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let her in. Let her yeah. in. Sorry yeah. about that. I'm, I'm assuming Christina did her, you know, took over. I told I you, the minute I she plugged did an in, intro. Glass <laughs> crashes, so I'm not plugging anything in. So, and, and Karen and I already <laughs> gushed a little bit about our, you know, how, how we know Sandra from way back when and our soap opera days. But she's going to go yeah. into a little bit more. She did talk a little bit about some things yeah. she's been doing. But yeah, I, I, I caught the end of that, so I got to make you guys louder, though. That I did. Um, when I was, I did my corporate training today and we had this rock star attorney there who gets it. And, you know, when the VW scandal happened, he pitched that and spoke about the legalities and the fantasy football stuff. And so he gets this. So that's, I was just talking about that and how to, you know, get in front of the media. And then Sandra was saying that she gets them polished and ready and then can send them to me to show them how to do it. Right. So, and now we'll let you take over on your social media updates because yeah. there's always good stuff. Well, you know what? It's so funny because both of those things really help with your social media. You know, you don't need to be really polished to do a good job with your social media. But as your business grows and your influence grows, you really need to work on that polish. I mean, I know I need to and most of my clients need to. So 
um, I love that we're talking about this today because, you know, with, with social media, there's a lot of things you can share and there's a lot of ways you can really get well known pretty quickly if you do it right. So having some of these other, these PR techniques and these camera techniques in your back pocket, so when you're ready to use them, you know how to find that, um, that just makes everything really more powerful, I think. Yeah, and, and um, Karen and I always talk about the magic between PR and social media, like how we have found this, you know, you everyone's doing social media and people want PR, but when you put the two together, it goes exponentially faster and you're much more credible and you're much more well-rounded credibility-wise because you're kind of everywhere. Yeah, and you know what, I was actually just saying, I had a session this morning with my business coach and I was just saying, because we talk about the business, different channels of my business, and I just said to her, really, the you know, the work that the Christina and I just took on a new client together, and that's really exciting to me. That's one of the most exciting parts of what I do because it's so much more fun to help somebody with social media when I know that there's somebody else trying to really get that in front of people, right? So to me, it makes it it makes it happen more quickly for everybody, which makes it win win win, right? So yeah. I'm really I love when we get the opportunity to do that. Um, and you know, not everybody's willing to do that. People just say, I just need help with Facebook or just help me tweet, you know, they don't really want to make the investment in the whole package, but when they do, oh my gosh, it's so much more fun that way. So true. So, so I think I missed your intro, Sandra. So I'm going to kind of, let I didn't actually, she hasn't done it yet. I didn't that, actually oh, get it. Okay. No, that was me gushing and now she can do her <laughs> official one. Intro. Well, let me yeah. just say before I let her do that, Christina and I do this, and we do some other. Um, we have some other projects that um, being seen well, charisma on camera really fits right nicely. And when I met Sandra initially, and I told Christina Christina about it, she was like, "I know who she is." I was like, "Me too," you know. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I grew up watching the shows that Sandra has, you know, been working on. So I'm excited to uh, to get to know her better. No, well, thanks. Yeah, I just, um, Christina was saying, you know, another world and, and, and knows that there were others. And I said, actually, I've been on more, more soaps than are on the air at this point. So I'm starting to seem dated. But um, yeah, I gave the long list to the shows I was on um, all the way up until just last year. Um, and, and I think they're going to continue it. I'm not sure. I don't know if my characters um, got the room to come back, but uh, at least I wasn't killed off. But that was a new, me can new media. Back. I know. Even if I, even if you're killed off, like Sunset Beach, yeah. I had a great character on there, and I was slaughtered, like basically stabbed to death. It was ha with a, with a hatchet. I mean, it was horrible. And they kept saying, "We're trying to figure out a way to bring you back." I'm like. <laughs> But yeah, you know, you know what? Soap watchers, soap fans, they, they, they let that stuff go anyway. They let that I stuff know. go. Anyway. I so, know. It's so, funny. Like, you know. well, I can come back as my twin. I can come back as a ghost. I've got a thousand ways I can come back. Um, <laughs> and that, that's part of the fun that I got to work in that genre for so long. I did nighttime as well. I did guest star stuff. I did nighttime series and, and, um, and was a regular on a few of those. But it's really the soaps that people tend to, to know because they saw my face in their living room for you know 14 years so I, I, right it's and i usually get did i go to school with you <laughs> and if there's no chance that i went to school with them i go did you ever watch oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. It. that's usually it <laughs> but um well i guess i'll tell you a little bit so it's really important for me for for people to know where i'm coming from because as you would say well nobody better than an actress to tell us how to be on camera um, the irony of that is that I actually became an actress so that I didn't have to be me I was fed like a lot of us are growing up I, I was really fed a lot of wrongs I was fed a lot of lies about my value um, and I believed them and all the way up to getting bullied while I was starting to model in this strange juxtaposition. So what ended up happening was I preferred to be someone else instead of being me. That was my escape. So I was actually extremely shy. I had bad vision. Um, and I was able to completely engulf myself in a, in a character, which as a, I think that's very common for a lot of very successful actors, in fact. Um, they can lose themselves like that, and, and I did. And I was able to have some success with it. The trouble came when I would be asked to do something as me. So a charity event, even an infomercial that they would offer to pay me and I would show up and the director would say, just be yourself. 
well, that's what we're all told, right? If we're experts and we're stepping in front of the camera and we're doing our thing, somebody that is helping you will say, just be yourself, don't worry about it. But I, what I teach is actually how to connect with yourself on your best day. To see yourself, as I say, a little bit more like God sees you and not the way we see ourselves through all those filters that I experienced and we all experience when, when we get these negative messages about us and we choose to hang on to them when they're not true. So I really work on helping people understand, yes, their message, Christina, we work together on those things, but really coming from their strength of who they are. Because you can give someone a message and tell them what to say, but if they don't own everything that they are, then they're going to be kind of, they're not going to be 100% and it's going to show. And a lot of times, even, even if it shows in their body, for instance, um, working with a client just this morning and she had been feeling a little inhibited because someone at one point said, you gesture too much, you use your hands too much. So she was thinking about not using her hands. So anytime that she had the I opportunity. I without mine. <laughs> right? Yeah, a lot of people can't. I can't. And so she was concentrating so much on not using her hands that she tightened her whole body and that and that will affect the way you breathe. That will affect mm -hmm. your voice. She won't feel like herself. And so you can tell her what to say, but she's not going to come across as really owning it. And it's really so, interesting that you say that because I and I, I help people a little bit with this in terms of having success, especially on television, is that your true authenticity comes out. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's that's what producers want to see. They want to see that kind of an expert that people can watch on television yeah. and relate to and know that you know what you're talking about and you can talk one-on-one -on -one with people and, and they get it and they believe you. Yeah, it's really, it's conversational. You have to show a little vulnerability sometimes when you tell your story. Mm -hmm. um, what, and I, I should also say what got me through all of that mess um, really, it was to it got to the point where I would just fall to pieces when somebody would say, "Get up on on this charity stage and and help us raise money." Of course, I'd want to do that, and even though I would want to do it, the stuff got in my way the same way it gets in front of people's way, same way it gets in front of people when they get to media and they haven't worked on themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, all I could think of was, "I need to be perfect. I, I need to say the right thing," I, and it was all about self consciousness instead of thinking about what I was actually giving because th all of this stuff inside of me wasn't in alignment. I didn't know how to, to own any of it, to regulate it, to value it. And so I would just literally, I would fall to pieces. I blacked out at a charity event once, not actually passing out, but I came close and I didn't remember being up on stage and saying anything. I watched a video of it and had no recollection of being there. I mean, I was really, really, really bad. So I sought performance coaches. And in the same process of learning performance on camera and learning how to host in, on TV and everything, I was also trying to learn about myself. So a lot of self-empowerment things, even going to a psychologist because I thought that would help. I learned a lot, but not so much about myself. <laughs> I learned more about the process. I, all of that stuff came together in a really interesting way. And that's, that's actually what saved me and what allowed me to start to have fun whenever somebody would say, just be yourself and have fun in front of the camera. I had a breakthrough one day where I actually started cracking up during a job and someone came up and said, the director came up and said that they loved it. And that was oddly where I made the connection that I can enjoy myself. So the piece of you that's on camera should be the, the best, you and your best day in real life. It's the same thing. It's not a performance, it's you having, you know, sharing your passion, sharing what you're all about. And one of the secrets that I give people to get their mind off themselves is, first of all, think about who you're serving. If you have, let's just say you're a coach, right? Like Karen, I'm sure you can, Christina, even you, I'm sure you can think of this. One person, one person that you helped, that had came up to you with so much thankfulness and so much gratitude and actually vocalized it to you and told you what a difference you made. If you can actually picture that person, that specific person is who you're talking to through the camera lens. Doesn't matter if you're on good, you know, if you're doing a national show, if you're doing a blog, if you're doing something like this, if you're sharing what you've got, really be specific. This is, a, this is the sense that you want to get. I call it the Oprah effect. No, I just understand there's a bunch of different Oprah effects. <laughs> Right. If she talks about your product, that's an Oprah effect. You're expected to go crazy when, in sales. But this Oprah effect is really when Oprah looks into the camera and talks to you, talks to the audience. Don't you feel like she's talking to you? 
It's yeah. so funny that you say that, Sandra. I interviewed yeah. a producer from Oprah, and my question was, how did Susie Orman and Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz and Rachel Ray, you know, what was it about them that Oprah loved that she turned them into household names? Oh, yeah, and they, took one off. word, authenticity. That yeah. was it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and their household names today. Yeah. And it's not it's not a performance. I, at no time do you look at Dr. Phil and think that he is presenting right. or performing. It's not that. So when people would first meet me and they say, oh, you're, you're a performance coach, you're a presentation coach, performance coach. I'm like, you know what? Performance is actually not what I teach. I teach you to get your message across while you're being you. And sometimes that is the toughest thing for people yes. to actually realize they can let go of trying to be perfect. If you use your hands, use your hands. It's my job as your coach to tell you if you're doing something that's not serving you. If you're doing, you know, if you're, if you're moving at the wrong times. One of the things to think about when I'm helping people, for instance, with their videos is, and this is, uh, it's true, isn't it, Christina, that if you put videos out there and, and you are being considered for media, they're going to Google you. They're going to find the videos and Absolutely. find out how you are. Yeah. So if you're, if you're fumbling around or you're moving too much and you're not coming across as being authentic in your videos, you're probably not going to get called in as a guest right. expert. So it's really important to make sure that in your videos you have the authority and the warmth and the authentic sense that's coming through and everything that they're going to be able to find. So one of the things that I give people as, as a tip, is it okay if I just throw these things out there? Is they Absolutely. Come Absolutely. Yeah. One of the Great. things that I, that I give people is, is if movement is fine. If you want to do a video and you want to walk around and move around, that's awesome. I'm all for being natural and moving the way you naturally move. However, there are a few times, a few things that you're saying that I really suggest you stay still. Your name, the name of your website, the name of your product or your book or your program. Don't move around on these things because that's where you want to seem the most authoritative. After you say, hi, welcome, my name is, and I'm here today to present such and such, then feel free to move around and, and have some fun. But I really think that's where you have to be straight through the lens, talking to that person that you most want to help and be really solid. Because if you're an expert, we're looking at you to be solid. Yes. Right. So you have to look grounded and have freedom, but be grounded on those things. I have to interject with, it, with a funny little story. I have a client uh, who wrote a book called The ADD Entrepreneur. And he has ADD, but he harnessed those traits and ended up building and selling a $20 million company. So we got him a lot of media exposure. Well, the first time he was on, they had him in a rocking chair, you know, a chair that moved. <laughs> and I was like, I watched the interview. I thought, oh, my gosh. So the second time, NBC came, and she pulled that chair right out. She's like, no, 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 you are in a that chair. No wheels, no rocking, nothing. Nothing to allow you. <laughs> yes, so exactly. Cool. That would be that would be a distracting motion. That's what I'm talking about. That would be not good. Yeah. Yeah. So the but second interview went much better than the first one, but it was a lesson learned. You don't think about someone with ADD can't sit still right. for a seven minute right. or three or four minute interview. So right. Right. And you know, that's that's another thing that I bet there's some folks at home that are like have a hard time when they sit down to do a video because they are high energy people. And I've had several clients that are high energy and they sit down and try to do a recording and they just feel like a fish out of water. So my suggestion is go with your energy, stand up. Even if you're using a webcam and you happen to be just shooting something using your computer, prop your computer up on books, on something. I mean, right now I'm in my library and I have my book up on a, on a, like a bucket basically that I put my, my weight, my workout weights in. <laughs> Nobody knows, but but it's just the right height. So you want to make sure that your that your camera is at at or slightly above your eye level, because we connect through your eyeballs. So you want to be able to see you. That's really important. But stand up and just put your camera appropriately and have use the energy that's in your body. If you sit down, you're going to feel stifled. And when yes. you feel stifled, you're not going to feel like yourself. So you got to work with who you are. That's a big part of what I do is helping people understand. Work with your strengths. And it, it, yeah, I'm not even going to mention weaknesses. Work right. with your strengths. I love that. You know, when I first started doing videos, I 
I was doing this. I was like going back and forth, like, and I didn't even realize it. And I was like, what are you doing? And like, you don't do it. I didn't realize it till like, it took me a long time to stop doing that. Let me just say, it took me like <laughs> a year to stop. And I still catch myself doing it. So, so you're right. If I wasn't so like worried about standing still or sitting still or whatever, maybe I wouldn't be, you know, rocking like this, you know, um, without so unconsciously. So it's yeah. funny. I love those tips. I had not heard those. But that's those are really that's really good advice. And like so that. somebody yeah. just wrote in the comments, which I think is really good. They said this is all good as long as you are comfortable and you look directly into the digital eyes of the person you want to reach. The digital and, eyes. And, that's interesting. Yeah. But people don't realize, you know, like right now I'm looking into I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking into the camera. And that took mm -hmm. me a really long time to get used to that. You know, when you're on a Google Hangout or something like this, you always want to look down and look at sure. the people. But right. you've got to get used to speaking comfortably, looking into that little green dot so yes. people can see you. Yeah, and that's one of the things that people would say, well, I want to work with you, but I'm not in your city. I have people all over the world that I've worked with because we do exactly this. So we're working virtually, but I make them not look at me, but look at, yeah, look at the little green dot. Well, exactly. Yeah. And it did take a while for me to get used to that, especially when I first, you haven't been on any of our other blabs, but I've talked about when I first started speaking, I was horrible and I would put sticky notes all around my laptop and I would try to read everything right. I was going to say. I was horrible. So I, I am the poster child for you can go from that to being on national television and being fine. <laughs> Just, right. it's, exactly. it, you know, it's, it's interesting that you, that you mentioned the sticky notes because um, something else that people don't realize that I, I am not a coach. And if you it, like Christina, if you say, here's the bullet points that they have to, they have to hit, I'll work on their bullet points with them before they go on air. And I will, if it's possible, I'll find a way for them to cheat. If they're really feeling uncomfortable, like what if I forget what I forget and, and maybe they're new to the whole process, it'll just make them feel better. Some people are really comforted by having some way to see that information. So I'll find a way that is, that is comfortable. For instance, one girl that I worked with is a social media girl and she had her points and I said, you're talking about social media. And she said, yeah. And I'm like, use your iPad, right. just look, point to it like, and the next thing, you know, and when you're going to, and, and it actually worked out great because she was able to use it as a prop and yet she had her, her three or four points on there and she felt totally comfortable. And it was really for her, it was just to get over a hump. It was, she was having some trouble in her, in her own life with her self-worth. And once we, once she got through that, we got through that, she actually didn't need it anymore. But I'm okay with finding people, finding ways to help people feel comfortable, whether it's using a prop to keep you on, on track or not. The most important thing is that you don't get caught up in your head. And you know what I mean by that. You've got, yeah. you've seen people that, that you maybe met out at a networking event and they say, Oh, go to my website, check out my new video. You go to the website and the person in the video is not at all the energy of the person that you met. Right. right. Yeah. That's because you know, one of the other problems that I have, that I like to use props for is I, you know, I'm from New Jersey. We tend to talk fast in New Jersey. So I talk to, and I watch them sometimes and I'm like, good Lord, why didn't anybody tell me to slow down? You know? So I, I have like the teleprompter app on my iPad, not really because I want to read it word for word, but because I can paste it. I can uh -huh. paste it. So I, I literally, I bring in like a, a ladder, an actual ladder because you know, it's in my, I have this crazy video setup and it, you know, the ladder has a thing for the paint. That's just the right height for the, you know, the teleprompter, you know, but that helps me just pace it. And, and I don't do that for all videos, but if I'm going to do a video for a sales page or, you know, important videos, I'll use the teleprompter to pace me. So I know that I'm, if I'm speaking too fast, you know, you know, now that you brought up teleprompter, Christina, do you think we should, or may we address the teleprompter thing? Because I sure. think a lot of people think, oh, I'll be fine. There's going to be a teleprompter. Oh. Using a teleprompter, right? It takes some training. It takes exactly. some getting used to. Because we have all seen these commercials. God bless these folks that put the commercials on at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah. Like a local lawyer or something. And they right. are reading like this through the teleprompter and you can see their eyes their going eyes. back and forth. Right. And, right. and, and you they, know, it's not their inflections and their, the way they no, ever. Right? No, it never is. And that's why using a teleprompter sometimes can be really detrimental unless that's you right. know how to do it. Because I honestly, I actually had somebody that's been on the news as a, as a guest 
on a regular basis who came to me because he said, after all these years, my producer still feels that when I do the teleprompter that I'm reading. So sometimes it's really hard to shake and really hard to seem authentic when you're reading through it. Part of that is before I even introduce anybody to a teleprompter, I make them play with words. So if you have something that you want, you know, if you have written down a sentence or something that you're like, I'm going to say this in my, in my video, great. Let's look at that sentence and punch the words that are the ones that you should be punching as opposed to the ones that you think you should be. In other words, I'm going to give you my top three things to make your life the happiest you've ever been. Is it top three that's the most important thing to punch? No, it's the happiest your life that's has ever right. been. Right. So I'm going to give you the top three things to make your life the happiest it's ever been. What a difference those two reads are. But when you have a teleprompter, a lot of times you're going to read it incorrectly. You're going to emphasize the wrong words and, and or you're not going to take pauses where we normally take pauses. So it won't seem conversational. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. I spoke at a huge conference, and I'm not going to throw the person under the bus, but I mean a huge, like, multi-million dollar conference. And their CEO had come in from Europe, and he was speaking with, you know, open arms like you're supposed to, but it was a little too much. And we look up, and we see the teleprompter, and it says, pause, turn left, turn right. Like, everything, it was so bad. And I even had a meeting with them afterwards and said, you have to get your CEO oh speaker training, presentation training. That, and it literally would say, and he would turn, and he would open and say, you know, open your arms. And he would turn and open his arms. And I thought, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's being yeah. so hot. But so what you're saying is so true. You, the teleprompter can be a disaster. It can it be really great if you... If know you really know how to do it, right, yeah. right. And I noticed that um, that my friend Rocker Life Coach is on here, and he talked about talking fast. Maybe we should address that. I mean, let's just. I'm just gonna grab things that I see popping up yeah, here. Is that okay? Perfect. Um, yeah. Kind of, kind of organic. But um, so one of the things about talking fast, obviously, I'm, I do too. <laughs> I realize I'm just speeding up. The more excited I get. So that's always been an issue with me. When I had performance coaches that would say, slow down, that's a blanket statement. And that is right up there with don't use your hands. Because then all I'm thinking about or all you'll be thinking about is talking slower. It's not, it's not about blanketing your whole speech with a dial that turns you talking slower. It's more about, think about working with the words, allowing pauses, playing with pauses, letting things sit. And it doesn't matter if you talk fast every once in a while, that's normally how we do it. We talk fast and then we slow down. So it's really just looking for the places where you can slow down, emphasize and pause, as opposed to thinking, I gotta slow down. Cause that's only gonna put you back up in your head, which is where we don't want you to be. And that's where sound bites come in for, you know, that's something that I help people with. You know, I don't train like you do, but I give them nuggets on things to do, but it's, you know, come up with that sound bite that you can get your point across. You can pause. It allows for a follow up question or just to be prepared when you do go to the media that you're not, Oh my gosh, I have this great story to tell. These are the statistics and this is how it goes and blah, blah. And you're just rambling for three minutes. And then they've got nothing. Yes. They've got nothing Correct. to really pull from. Right. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right, so we opened up the seat. I know Ace Music is dying to come in. <laughs> there we go. Come on in, Ace. Come on in. You got it? Oh, I like that picture. It's okay. I'll just wait. I'll wait. I'll, just wait. I'll just wait. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. We have to have some structure to this. Yeah, it I know. To be all <laughs> Otherwise, it would be chaos. Okay, so I just have to show you something really quick, guys. This is what I have over my, my camera. Nice. Little smile. smile. Yeah, I know. Yeah. My my 14 year old son draws much better than I do. So that's my little cue. I look at the <laughs> white dot on mine, by the way. I don't have a green okay. dot. So yeah, I have a white dot too. I guess that's PC versus Mac, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. My Mac, my Mac is charging. So I mean, I'm like PC Mac house. I have everything iPhone and so on and so forth. Yeah. Sandra, Sandra, very nice to meet you. Very impressive background. I am actually you honored too. to be in a room here with you. So really cool stuff. <laughs> and I want to hear about Christina's speaking engagements because, as you can tell by my profile, I am a speaker. And Karen, nice to meet you. I'm from New York. It's okay. We can talk very fast. <laughs> okay, cool. 
we'll <laughs> slow down our pace. So uh, for those of you who don't meet, my name is, uh, can I just say who I am? Or is this sure, of course, okay. uh, My name is Anthony Ace. I help people rediscover their energy by infusing energy into their passion and their purpose. And I connect it with a bridge called why. And I do that through motivational speaking. So I've been a speaker for 10 years and I mostly been in the entertainment space. And yes, I was an MTV dancer. We'll leave that one alone. Uh, and, uh, Are you on YouTube? Yeah, Can we find it? Yeah, I knew that was coming off. <laughs> I purposely found you it. You know people are looking off. right now. I was looking for it now. So yeah, I kind of been <laughs> that. So um, I really wanted to come in because I like the topic. I think the topic's great. Um, I was listening to a few things that you guys were saying. And I think what I just literally got asked today to speak on a panel. Now, I know when I speak in front of audiences, as you can tell, I'm like a disciple of the Tony Robbins era. I mean, I've been watching him since 85, so he's like my frame of reference. So I have all this energy, and I just can't turn it off. So I'm, I, I got asked to speak on a panel, right? It's a finance panel, and I got the okay today, and I wanted to get some tools and tips about hand gestures, movements, eye contact, head, because I'm always on, and I'm always on stage with the mic, I'm the one talking, I'm infusing, I'm getting people to clap their hands. I mean, I'm, I'm like that preacher, talker, inspire, motivator person. I'm going to be sitting there like this, answering, and it's, it's going to so, freak me out. So, so I you, to have, you, have to go, you have to go from being the lead role to being a co-star. You know, yeah. it's going to be tough for me. That's not, that's <laughs> not an actor. It's not me either. <laughs> it's not me, so it's going to be tough. So, But I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Ladies, do you want to go? I, I just spoke on a panel Wednesday night in New York, and, and I speak, I keynote too. I, I like that because you draw your energy from the other people on the stage too. Um, you know, look at the person asking the question, and I always address my answers to the audience. Um, mm -hmm. I still use my hands. You know, I'm still look at the people in the audience specifically. You can feed on what other people have said. You know, usually they'll go in an order, kind of like, you know, this ask this person first, and the next question they ask this person first, and just listen to what the other people say and add on or, or add on, you know, your thoughts and you just can't stand up and I know, get the I know. attention. Well, I think, I, yeah, think I, would, I would say the only thing I would add to that is the New Jersey, New York thing needs to be shut down when you're not speaking. So I can't you know, say, I can't say, I can't say how you're doing. I can't say how you're doing. How are you doing? How are you doing? When you're not speaking. Little Joey from Friends there. Yeah. And don't interrupt another time. panelist. Like I have a hard time oh. with that because I have a lot to say. And when they're yes. saying something, that, yes. that took me a while to just let That's them have thing. their answer. So let yeah. me give you a really quick, let me give you a really quick 10 second um, sort of, let me draw the picture. So it's a panel of, I'm the fourth panelist. The three panelists that I work with offer something. I also work in a hedge fund. So we buy large scale assets. We build them, flip them and sell them. But we do it as a cash transaction. So there's kind of three steps to it. There's the guy who brings us the deal. We buy it. We rehab it. And then we flip it. And then we sell it to the three other guys on the panel. So I'm, I'm sort of like the in-between. So my approach is going to be much more simple. We are the lubricant to get deals done is what we say. I know that's kind of a funny way to say it. We are. We, we get things right to the finish line. And these, these gentlemen, I'll say it lightly, these gentlemen are economists. They're Harvard grads. They're Wall Street guys. And I'm like, listen, I went to Pace. I got my psychology degree. You know, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a sales trainer. I spent 25 years in corporate. I'm not going to sit there and look for the big boy words, right? I'm not going to do that. So I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic because the, the moderator told me on the phone, he says, yeah, we need someone who has that middle piece. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm that, I'm going to be the, the controversial guy. So I guess I have to just have to accept being the center of attention in my own way by being different from the other three. Sure. So and the moderator should, should control it as well yeah. so that, you know, one person can't go off for 10 minutes, you know, it should be limited and that you're all, you know, building on one another to answer yeah. a question. Right. And I'm and a I, toucher. I'm a toucher. So I'm like always touching people's hands. That's my way of communicating. So I, I'm always touching like, really, I understand. Like, it's my way of communicating. It's just, I do that with everybody, with CEOs, COs, business owners. I, I'm always touching people. It's just my way of giving them my energy to like, let them know that I'm really present with you. That so might be, be a little tough in a panel. But. Yeah, I know. Well, if the guy's next to me, I'm going to be like, no, but, but here, this is really what it means. Let me, let me, let me explain it to you. It's like my passion just oozes out of my skin. 
it's what it is what it is you, you can't change who you are you can, uh, you can't anthony can i can i use you as and you probably will know this but can i use your the panel situation as a teaching point for Please. some folks Please. um uh, obviously like christina said always look at the person that is um that's speaking just it, it just looks respectful and the other thing is chances are you will be being recorded it's going to be somebody will have it videoed somewhere and um, particularly I give this advice to my friends and my clients that are on panels for television always always think that you are on camera yes always never assume that you're not because the moment that you assume that you're not and you roll your eyes or you flip your hair somebody will judge you will, will judge that, you right. yeah right. and they will judge Someone's you for something it. that is not at all what you intended but they will make a judgment on you and it will not usually be positive a good so one. right exactly yeah. so exactly always 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 um assume that that you are that you're on it's yeah. going to be all just so you know sandra thank you for bringing up that point mm -hmm. it will be live streamed probably on you you stream i think it mm -hmm. will be uh, on a conference call it will also be photographed and it will be video recorded so i'm yeah. You're gonna make sure on. I have no bags under my eyes. Gonna pull all this on my face. My tie's <laughs> gonna be on. I'm gonna be to the nines. I'm gonna be dressed to the nines. So yeah, lots it's, of sleep. Uh, lots of sleep. Not, <laughs> lots not, of water. Like, lots of sleep. Not like now, right? Not like I look now. No sleep. No, don't, but that, that's don't drink any helpful. milk. No dairy products. Right to coat your throat. Exactly. Exactly. No, that, that's that makes a lot of sense. When I when <laughs> I did, I remember doing my first keynote speech, um, like five years ago. Uh, you know, I did the ums, the ahs, you knows, and then I learned over time. And then I just kind of let it out. It's sort of like you kind of, people say you, you, you sort of like let it out. It's like you, it's like a exhaling. So you let the thought out and you let it flow without the ums, the ahs, and your knows and the ohs and that type thing. So what I'm going to focus on is I'm a soundbite person. So I try to tell stories. I link stories based on soundbites. So if I know what I'm going to say by after being an active listener, I'm going to build my story and I'm going to connect my sound bites with my intro, sound bite, outro, and then stop talking, Anthony, type thing. Because <laughs> on a panel, because on a panel, it's it's not a monologue. It's it's very much an interactive discussion. So I can't sit there and rant for ten minutes like this. Right. So it'll be interesting if I get the recording. I'll share with all of you. I'd love to get. Yeah, the I would love to. I was just thinking. I would love to see it. Yeah. yeah it's no, a, it's a solar right. finance conference. In a solar finance conference. In New York at the Roosevelt Hotel this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I will is see if I can find the link. The, the yeah, blog, let me. Blog, you put it in the chat? Yeah. It, oh, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not going to be on Blab. It'll probably be on Ustream, which everyone. Right, but has if you access have the to. link to it, we'll see if we can. You know, I'll put it on my calendar. If I'm free, I'd love to watch you. To watch. To watch. And of, it. and of course, and of course, what I'll do is I, I'll say, "Hi, Karen. Hi, Christina. Yeah. Hi, Sandra. Yeah. You watch me. And we'll see. I love the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, I was a moderator of a panel about a month ago, and it was the first mm -hmm. time I was ever the moderator. I was more nervous to be the moderator than if I was speaking in front of a room of 10,000 people because really? I felt like I needed yeah. to support you. Like I felt like I needed to do a good job of making sure all the panelists really got to say their, what they want to say and bring out the best in each panelist. I was more nervous for that than speaking. So hopefully your moderator is as um, – spending as much time I wanted to get to, I made sure I got to know them all. So I knew what kinds yes. of questions to, you know, to forward to them. So it's but a thank pretty you, uh, thank interesting. You, thank you for setup. being a responsible moderator though. Yeah. <laughs> because that's, that's, you know, I, I, as somebody that's been on panels, I appreciate a moderator that does that homework. Well, the moderator that I spoke to actually gave me the questions and I was too Good. preoccupied to write them down. She's also in the UK. So it was really hard to understand how and she was speaking very fast i said karina can you slow down a little and she goes these are the three questions you want to ask and, da, 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 and you'll be the fourth panelist uh can you send me your bio and your picture uh okay see you later <laughs> see you on tuesday I'm, I'm really trying not to jump on the new york accent um versus the british actual english comment that is just dying to come out <laughs> Yeah, I know, she's I know. in the UK and I couldn't understand her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, see, but as from New York, see, but I'm, I have a New York accent. I have a Brooklyn or a Long Island or a Staten Italy. As I say, it's called Staten Italy. Yeah, nice. I don't have that. I have a very clear, I, I just have a powerful New York accent and it's just who I am. <laughs> and it's just, when I go to North Carolina to speak, they go, huh? <laughs> okay. Wait, I just, before, before I continue, Jeb is in the room. Jeb is from Raleigh. 
Uh, Jeb is from Raleigh, and he talks a little slower than me, but he's also a really good guy, and I know he's making fun of me right now, so because I've been on a few blabs with him. But it's, it's, it's all good. Well, I appreciate the advice, Sandra. Thank you. And Christina, you're, I'd love Thank to hear you. more about your speaking because I, I could probably learn a, a bunch of things from you. And Karen, my New Jersey friend, I'm here in New York. I yeah. will wave I'm to you. But as soon as I get the information, I'll, I'll send it here. I'll, I'll put it in the, uh, in the comments, and hopefully we'll, you guys will see yeah, me soon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to free up the seat. Great. Thanks, ladies. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Anthony. Yes, New Yorkers have to stick together. Yeah, because yeah. we're so hard. I, we so can't stand up for ourselves. You know, yeah, I, so I love that. I love it. All right. I'm going to bring Tim in. Okay. Hey. Hello. Hey, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> you don't know why. You see, Sanders, Sanders, I've been chatting with Sandra on back and forth phone texts for two weeks about being on oh. see? About, about getting on his, on, on, on Blab, Blab with him. And then I go, I'm going on Blab today. He's like, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I seen it before she called me. That's what's funny. It's like, I saw it and I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah. So then yeah. I get the phone call. So. <laughs> so you just came on to heckle Sandra? Yes. No, I her. did not. You can, this, this is, uh, I've heard Sandra, I don't think Sandra, how many times have I heard you talk over the past four years? Oh, a dozen? you could probably do my speech for me. No, it's changed <laughs> in four years. My, my topic has changed a little bit. It was mine, but it's like, you know, we've seen each other speak. We were part of Mastermind together. Um, you know, yeah. it's so great to hear us on different platforms. And just what you've got going on, this I think this platform, Sandra, is just made for you to come out and help people. I really This do. is pretty cool. I have to say thank you guys for my first lab here. This is really pretty awesome. I love the interaction and everything and want more of it. So yeah. Well, you know, I was actually gonna ask you that, Sandra. How does the this new explosion of live streaming, you know, we talked about how you teach people to be real. You can't help but be real on live stream. I mean, I've got on right. periscopes right. in you know I literally jumped out of bed one time. They talked me into getting on a periscope. So I literally like threw a shirt on over my nightgown so I didn't look like I was in my pajamas and, you know, did this to my hair and turned on the okay. camera. So wow. I never would have done before, right? So so I think, you know, I think it's giving us a platform, a little bit of a different platform. Of, of, you can't not be authentic when you're just turning on the camera and talking on a consistent basis. I think I mean, the trouble good. is that what I sense is that people that – don't they just won't get started you know what i'm saying like i want yeah. to empower people to to go ahead and just start using it but it's a very terrifying thing for somebody that that hasn't tapped into their strength and and doesn't have that confidence of themselves on camera maybe they've never seen themselves on camera so for them to hop on and start doing it it's going to be really hard it's a big leap so yeah, my suggestion is start person. playing with camera what's that i didn't I did a talk on Periscope a couple weeks ago um, to a small group in New York. It was a women's networking group. And there was 20 women, and all of them had Periscope on their phone and had watched Periscopes, and only one had actually turned on her camera. One out of 20? So, yeah. Yeah. But it, it is, I, I, I said I'm the poster child from my very first video I ever did with the sticky notes and the, <laughs> oh, what does this say? <laughs> that, you know, I can wing a two-minute video now. Yeah. Um, so it, Practice, you know, practice and using the tools that you're talking about, you know, when you learn how to pause and, you know, breathe and authenticity and just making it, it just becomes natural. And you, you know, now Karen and I do this blab every week. And, and actually, yeah, you know, remember. Anthony, Anthony brought up in the very beginning when he had the sticky note that had the happy face on it. Um, and I know Tim has heard me say this a thousand times, but the number one tip that I can give people to make them look um, friendly to make them look comfortable and have them feel comfortable and positive, smile. It's free. It's an even smile. If you think you're smiling too much, you're probably just about there. Uh, really smiling is the thing that will really warm us up to you, create trust, have a feeling like, I mean, think of it. If somebody walks up to you on the street and is smiling, you feel a lot more comfortable than somebody walking up that isn't smiling. Your first thing, if you don't know them, is what do you want? Right. And if they're smiling, then it's like, well, what do you need? It's just just a different yeah. thing. It's a very powerful tool to just smile. And we forget that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. right. Smile. And, I, and it's funny, Sandra, how many of my pictures have me smiling in them? I think none. <laughs> I think that mean rocker face. I know, right? Tell us about you. What's 
Yeah, yeah. tell us the Tim story. Uh, in a minute. In a minute. Okay. In a minute or two. <laughs> I was in the car wash industry up until 2004. I sold my business and uh, tried to figure out what I was going to do next. A very professional looking person uh, with my car wash business. And uh, I sold the business and wrote a do not compete clause in to get out of the industry. I wanted out for good. Uh, one of my customers at the time was Zig Ziglar. And oh. uh, I actually went over and sat down with Zig and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do next. And he said, Tim, you'd be a good coach and speaker. And I still to this day, I'm still trying to believe him. But anyway, um, that's my own issues. Uh, I waited about five years. I goofed off for five years and worked at Starbucks. And while I was there, I grew long hair. I looked like a, a like guy like this. And I went back and talked to Zig in 2010 and said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a haircut. I'm going to go buy a suit. And Zig said, no, you need to, to do just this. You need to do, keep the long hair. It's the most authentic I've ever seen you. Uh, go out and be yourself and take this to the speaking world. People need to see it. So we started the, and that's why my, my Twitter handle is still Rocker Life Coach. My first mm -hmm. website was rockerlifecoach.com. It was a domain that kind of said who I was, even though I'm not a life coach. Um, through the mastermind that Sandra and I are part of, we developed my system is called uh, the Rock and Roll Keys to Business Success. Mm -hmm. And uh, my radio show is the Tim Gillette radio show. The current book I'm working on, and I do a, a nightly uh, blab on it right now, it's called Rock Around Your Blog. How to use a blog in your personal brand to build your business. So. And a blog, cool. a blog is good for backing up PR too, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And I say you, you write a blog not just to get people to read your blog, but you write that blog so when they come to check you out, which Sandra said earlier, and they will check you out, yeah. mm -hmm. that you've got stuff written on your expertise so they know you know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And from a social media standpoint, nothing is better than having a regular blog because that gives you regular content okay. to, to be talking about. You know, I actually changed my blogs to come out on Mondays now because that, that, that's my tone for the week then. That's what I'm going to talk about that week, whatever that blog was. It used to come out late in the week. But about a month and a half ago, I changed it to come out on Mondays because now on Blab and on Periscope and on my Facebook and Twitter accounts, I talk. That's the topic I talk about that week. So it I gives me that. a foundation Not for that. my social media for that week as well. Mm. So that's I mean, yeah, good. the blog is how I started in 2010. I started with a blog, and from 2011 to 2000, and I think 13, I was doing a blog six, five and six days a week. A post five yeah, and six days. That's two weeks week. in a row. Huh? Last we week just, we just had saying the same we thing. just had Bill on last week, and that's what he. What did he say, Karen? You you aren't anybody in the blogging world to get four hundred blog posts up. Yeah, I've got seven hundred on one blog, four hundred on another one, one hundred and fifty on another one. I've got five blogs, and I have one blog that I actually write as a female watching TV shows. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> how, how does that go for you, yeah. Tim? How does that work, Tim? <laughs> I well, didn't know this about you. Know who, you know who the person that was created because they wanted the website. And I'm like, I like the idea and I'm not just going to go get TV junkie guy. So I took her, uh, my daughter's idea and I just kept writing it. My daughter's the face of it. She ever comes back to do it. It's her blog. Oh my gosh. That's so I, wow, I, put everything up. I just, I write it and uh, we accent it to sound like her. That's actually wow. quite funny. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, dear, dear Abby dear, I don't have my glasses on to read what these people are writing about me. Dear Abby Gillette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they're impressed that, as we all are, as certainly I am, that you had Zig Ziglar to mentor you for whatever yeah. short period of time that you, what was he like? Zig was, I mean, he was just one of the, he was the same person you've seen on stage, off stage. You know what I mean? He was identical. Which is good. And he would help you um, if, he, if he passed you in the grocery store and you stopped to say, you know, what I mean, hey, I appreciate you for this. All right. He'd stop and give you two words of advice on it. It's the way he was. Mm, he lived wow. life that way. Um, and uh, I remember the day he met my daughter. I mean, it was as he was starting to go in health. He, he met my daughter for the first time. And um, he talked about, how, you know, how beautiful she was and, and, and said, you know, you know, Tim, at least you had good taste once in your life. You married this oh. mom. So I'm like, <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that marriage went long by the wayside. I didn't, I didn't have the heart to tell Zig, I'm sorry. That was a bad experience in my life, Zig. But um, you know what I mean? 
you know, he, he was always a heartfelt person to try to help people. And I love his stories because I, I, I knew his wife, Jean. Um, now I go to the Ziegler offices here in Dallas, have a Monday morning devotional, which I go to about once a month that I get to go on Monday mornings. They do it. And uh, I know Tom, Julie, his daughter, and I get along well because we were both the rebels in our family. So we get along very well. And many times I've been able to call Julie and just talk to her about stuff I was dealing with. And um, when they started the Ziegler Legacy Project, um, they wanted me to be part of it. And um, with, you know, the, the people who are in the sales part of the company wanted me to be part of it. But after talking with Julie, she said, her and I sat and talked about it. When, you know, the first thing that her, she said that dad would say, she would tell you, Tim, don't do it. It's not you. And that is hard to take because really you want to be associated with someone like Zig Ziglar. But really, if I did, it would, it would die my, it would it'd dilute my brand and I can't do that. And Zig would be the first person to tell me, don't dilute your brand. You need to stay with this. So. And that's Sandra, what you were talking about earlier as well, that, you know, staying true to yourself and your, who you really are. Yeah. And that and would probably come through. It's, it's, it's hard in the beginning, which is why I, I love what I do. Cause I get to help people work through that and discover that sometimes people, well-meaning friends, even business associates will give somebody a note, like don't use your hands. Um, and, and then they have all of this and they can't really find their ground. They can't find who they are. So, uh, I, I love what I do when I'm, when I'm working with people like that, but it's interesting that like what Tim was saying, you know, he grew his hair down and he says, I'm going to cut it. And there was a, we, we sometimes think I need to act like somebody that has already been successful in my industry. There's something about looking at them and seeing their success and seeing what worked, but if it's not you, it doesn't don't do it and we've all done that and I'll say this really quickly but there was a a woman who was really top in the game of online marketing she did um, newsletters and we called them e-zines right she had blonde hair and she was super successful and I thought that's what I that was the route I was going to take so I watched a video of hers and said I can do that and I actually did my hair like her I stood like her I mimicked her and then I watched the video and I went ooh. That doesn't seem right at all. And you know, in in essence, I was trying to do. I was going back on my old fallback, which be anybody but me, right? Act like this person, and it it didn't benefit me, and it won't be benefit anyone else. You really have to own everything that you are, and even the goofiness. If you're a corporate speaker and you say, "But I have this goofy side of me," and you're trying to fight it, don't fight it. Bring it in. Corporate people right. are people too. I mean, they. They want to be entertained. They want to know that that you know that you're human. So right. show all of that, and that's actually probably what's going to make you stand out. The stuff that a lot of people hide in themselves is what makes them different. Right. Like Tim, when you were saying, "I'm going to cut my hair so that I fit into the corporate world and corporate speak," and and Zig said, "No, he's right on." Right. And you're so right. And I told you today I spoke for Vistage, which is you know these are all CEOs of huge corporations. And I'm a little quirky. I talk with my hands and I'm silly. And I mean, I had them laughing all day. I think they really had fun. Well, I know they had fun because they told me afterwards. So that's another thing too. The corporate America doesn't get to necessarily have fun in the boardroom. So when right. they go to something like this, if that's who you are, mm -hmm. you know, I let them loosen up a little bit. I'm speaking with a new corporate client and they talked about their, their signature speaker from last year. And, and they said, well, you know, as, entertain as, as wonderful as her stories were, they said she was good, but overall the day was just so boring. It was just so boring. And, and they want an escape. They want to have some fun. Like I said, they're people too. So yeah. absolutely, you know, enjoy yourself. Do something that's a little quirky. Be a little quirky. Be that. And, and um, I'm so happy because I started a new company this year called Horsepowered Consulting. And Horsepowered is actually the name that I go into the companies and corporations with because Charisma on Camera not all companies have people that have to be on camera, but they all have to be able to have that presence, whether it's a sales team or a CEO or manager or whoever, everybody needs to have that, that strong personal presence and leadership skills. And that's what I bring in with horsepower. But with that, with that title, I am now so happy that I have given up my jackets forever suits. Nevermore. I am now going to be wearing my cowboy boots 
and oh, I am allowed perfect. to do that. <laughs> right. I love that. And, perfect. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. And you know what I think people don't realize sometimes too, you know, and, and I'm going to, I'll speak for myself, but I think it's probably, you know, will cover some of you as well. I don't need a thousand new clients. I don't need to speak in front of a thousand places. So if there's a, if there's 950 places that I'm not a good fit for because I'm too quirky, that's okay. Cause I only need 50, you know? Yeah. So, so if you're not, you know, even with your business, I don't need a hundred clients. So I don't care if we're competing, you can have those clients. I'll take these, you know? So I think yeah. that we sometimes forget that it's okay to walk away from business that isn't a good fit for us so that we can stay in the areas that we do love to do. And that's where we'll shine. And that's where you will, you will continue to, you know, to grow your influence when you stay yes. in that area that you love to be in. Exactly. Exactly. And Karen, we've been good with each other with that too. You know, we, we worked with a client that was not a good fit and I left first and Karen left right <laughs> after me. <laughs> so exactly. it's like I, we fired yes. our client. I have yeah. never done that before, but it just wasn't us. It wasn't working right. and but the it's but the okay. first time the first time that you do fire a client client though, doesn't it kind of give your confidence a boost after oh, you yeah, yeah. right? It does. And it frees up just energy for whatever for all of the yes. other things you don't have time to do. You know, it that that's the place the, the clients you need to fire are the ones that are sucking up the energy that you could be giving yes. to these fun things that you love to do. Yes. Yeah. Or, okay. or the energy that, that your good clients, the ones that you love, should yes. have all of you. And sometimes yes. if they're if they're back to back, uh, I kind of feel like I would be drained by somebody before going into you know the next yes. session. And yeah, it sucks you dry, and you're like, oh, <laughs> and you're right, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So Sandra, tell us how people can get to know you more. Tell us how they can find you because we're going to wrap this up here. Sure. Um, probably we, it is, I think it is officially up. We haven't made the official launch yet, but the Sandra D Robinson website, Sandra D.com um, with a full name spelled out, easiest way to find it and find me. Um, but charisma on camera is the longstanding website that you can find the ad. And that's where you can actually get the book. Okay. So, cool. in fact, this isn't even coming out. It's on pre-sale now. So, actually, if anybody oh, goes to Charisma on Camera and wants to get the book, um, right now, since it isn't launched yet, it's coming from me, not Amazon, not the distributor. So, if anybody orders this from watching tonight, I will sign it to them, and I will Yay. send it off personally. So, Yay. Yeah. Very cool. So, Charisma yeah. on Camera is one way you can find me, and then SandraDRobinson.com. And, of course, Everything from Instagram to you know to Twitter to Facebook, I'm on all that. Yeah, I'm Very coming cool. down to Thank Austin to so get much. my book personally. Yeah. Say that again. <laughs> I'm going to Austin to get my person my book personally. I'm going to the rant. There you go. Okay. You go. <laughs> well, we're so excited you're to be here today. Rant. I mean, we're really yeah, committed to, to bringing our audience people like you that can help them really elevate their brand, and I think this definitely um, is going to yeah. be a popular one. And I want to just kind of take the, the you just mentioned Twitter, and I know that you are a big tweeter because we've tweeted. Um, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to kind of make like a, a, a worldwide announcement here. Oh, Sina and I have decided to start doing Lunch and Learns under the Get Seen, Be Heard brand. And most people know me as LinkedIn, and I do a lot of LinkedIn training, but lots and lots of people ask me to do Twitter trainings, and I've never done one. The first Twitter training is going to be under the Get Seen Be Heard brand. It's November 12th, and we're going to do it's ridiculously cheap. I think we're doing it for 48 dollars. So if you and I am going to teach you. I mean, people hire my company thousands of dollars to to handle their Twitter account for a couple of months. I'm going to teach you every single thing I do from the time a client comes on board until the time I turn it over to them um, in this workshop. So we are going to start doing lunch and learns to kind of the That's things we nice. talked about here because because all of the people here that talked about speaking I know for me I have a lot of Twitter followers that helps me get a lot of gigs it helps me get those speaking gigs because they know That's I'm sharing true. it with 60,000 people right so so if you are a speaker Twitter's a great place to kind of focus some efforts and I'm going to show you exactly what I do for my brand and my clients on Twitter so Christina my mouse died can you type oh. in the bit.ly? It's bit.ly. Um, it's G-S-B-H. So get seen to be heard. All caps. G-S-B-H-N-O-V-15. 
And I want to just tell people that I, when Karen and I started working together a year ago, she taught me a lot of stuff that I'm sure she's going to do in November. I grew my Twitter following to under 1,000. I'm at almost 11,000. And these are good, qualified people that I engage with, I get customers from. In so one let year? me tell you, it yeah. worked. One year. Yeah. One year. Nice. And Karen is oh, we've really good. Done. All we've really done is how to grow your following. We, I actually was thinking about there's a there's another whole process that I've never even talked to you about, and I've you know there's different people I talk to different things about. So you're gonna get every single step of it. You're gonna learn a lot in this, Christina, too. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. So I kind of decided that's exactly how I'm gonna format it. I'm gonna just say, what do I do when I take on a new client? These are the processes, and this is, and I'm gonna, sh I'm, we're gonna, I am not about PowerPoints. We're gonna be in Twitter. We're gonna be in these tools that I use. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So register now. Um, I'm, you know, I'm excited to do this one. So that's kind of where this is going next. Um, where these are on, this will be up on YouTube in a couple of days. At some point, when I figure it out, it'll also be up as a, as, as a podcast on iTunes. Hopefully, in the next week or two. Um, and now we're going to be doing these workshops. So um, I'm really excited, and I'm excited that you both were here, Tim. Thank you for jumping on. I think I actually was on a blab you were in yesterday or the day before because you are recognizable. And I think yeah. that I remember being on something that you were on maybe yesterday or the day before. So I'll keep an eye out. Um, Come join uh, me online, Karen. I do one on blogging every night, and I'd love to have you. I think I'm doing Sanders going to be on, on mine on Monday night. So Okay. Mm -hmm. Every night, what time? Uh, it's I usually – it's sometime between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Central Time. Okay. I, 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 depending on when I'm getting back in from a speaking engagement or when I got to go back out okay. to one. So well, I'm an East uh, Coast morning person. So, you know, nine o'clock at night isn't a good blab time for me, but I can watch. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye out because I love this topic and I love your topic. I love to talk about blogging. So I'd love to cool. hear what, you're, what you've got going on that. And Sandra, thank you. It was so great to meet you. I love what you're doing. We'll need to connect yeah. offline because I think there's yes. a lot of synergy between the two of us. So that'll be great. Yes, yeah. it's been great hanging out with you, Christina. And Karen, thank you. Oh, thank you for, for doing this. Um, so now that the Mutual Admiration Society has uh, <laughs> shutting down, I'm gonna, we're going <laughs> to sign off. We will see you back. Oh, wait, Christina. Who's next week? Uh, Andrea. Andrea Ayers is next week. Oh, that's I'm so excited. So we and you, you just want to grab the link. Not having okay. competitors. So Andrea Ayers pretty much does what I do. She's Launch Grow Joy, but she does a lot with product based businesses and does a lot with magazines. Um, so so between the two of us, we are gonna have a lot of really awesome stuff to share about getting publicity, especially if you're a product based business. So definitely tune in next week. Yeah, I'm going to um Put the link in the chat. Again, I'm doing this without my mouse because my battery in my mouse died since we started this. So I'm a little clunky, but hang on one second, and I will put the link in so you can register if you get a little notification that, um, you know, when it starts. Um, yeah. So that's the link for next week's show. Um, Andrea Ayers, I'm excited. To, I'm going to sit back and watch this one because I'm yeah. sure I'm, I'm going to be taking <laughs> a lot of notes with this one. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited to get to know you, Tim. And Anthony, if you're still around, thanks for being on. Uh, Sandra, thank you so much. Um, we'll see you guys again next week. Okay, we're done recording. Oh. We're still here. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. That was so awesome. Cool. Yeah. That was fun. Thanks, that guys. Was fun. That was fun. It was really Let cool. Let us know your blab. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Now I have the pressure to like get this going. I know between that and Periscope, which I haven't taken a leap into either. It's like I gotta, yeah. I've actually been spending so much time trying to get the website up and oh, trying to get these. Big, yeah, and my website has to be uh, the SD, SDR, the Sandra D. Robinson site, has to represent me as an on-camera talent, a speaker, and a trainer. And then lead to horsepowered and charisma on camera. It's just been tricky to try to get it all in balance. And the right. poor girls that are working with me don't really understand the whole show business thing, you yeah. know. Um, so I'm trying to explain to them, no, all I need is this. And they're like, but we need a paragraph. Like, no, you don't need a paragraph. <laughs> Casting directors don't read paragraphs. So, yeah. you know, producers don't read paragraphs. Yeah. They right. just need to see a video. video and the video. Right. That's it. Right. So, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I have the but, same issue. I have, you know, my all of my work is done under Karen Yankovich and a corporate client you know, I mean, if I'm saying, if they say, we'll promote you, 
you know, how do we promote your social media services? I wanted to have a brand. So I actually started up level media for the very same thing so that I have a corporate face. They get an invoice from a corporation that, you know, I mean, it all gets come, goes, comes in and out of the same place, but um, right. I get it. It's the positioning on it is, is important yeah. when you're working with it corporations. Is. It is. It's been very, very tricky t for me to, to have that balance because if people, I realized this is, this is kind of funny. Um, Christina, you'll, you may be able to see the, the shame in this. I was speaking, um, I launched into speaking. It was traveling all over the United States and speaking on how to, you know, be comfortable on camera and do your videos for your business. And I was probably speaking for about two years before I realized that people weren't Googling charisma on camera as much as they were Googling my name because they would remember my name because it was up, but they may not remember Charisma on camera. So yes. I Googled myself and my Sandra D. Robinson site came up with dark hair and a MySpace link. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh <my> gosh. <laughs> but it's funny because I did, I have ChristinaDaves.com, which is kind of a media site, but all across the top you can get, to my product-based business, you can get to PR for anyone, you can get to my speaking, it's just kind of an all-encompassing, so I think, I think that's important to have. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, you know my, my That's my challenge at the moment, but it, it, the site is up, we're tweaking the last little bit of it, and then I have to do my speaker reel, which for me is, um, believe it or not, one of the hardest things for me to do, to watch myself and edit myself. I can watch other people, but. If you, I just finished mine, it is so good. I've got some guys in New York who, who well, Karen knows them, but um, Scott did mine, Karen, and it. Did he? Yeah, can I it's it? really good. I, I would love to see it, because I definitely Can I see it? Too. Yeah, if you go to PRforanyone.com backslash speaking. It's a new one? Or okay, it's a new one. I just, I just oh, I uploaded it this week. Okay, good, good. I will take a look at it because I do, you know, I like Scott. I know. He did a great <laughs> job for me. It's I'm really happy with it. Good. So, yeah. And then good. when I do, San, Sandra, I might have to pick your brain. I am um, in uh, January. I'll be interviewing Hoda Kotb for a fireside cool. chat. I'm so excited, but I'm like, Whoa, I've never done. I've done this, but. A one on one with 500 people being live streamed to thousands of other people. I need to prepare a little. You know, you know, the, the main thing about that is it's an intimate conversation. Yeah. Even for the people that are watching, you can have a million people watching you. They're still watching one at a time. So it's an intimate conversation. Yeah. Okay. Not well, I'm reading deal. her book now. I just got the advanced copy. So I'll obviously have a lot to talk about with that. But what do you think of her book? I just started it. So I'm just at the, it's all, it's called uh, Where We Belong. It's all inspirational stories. So I'm just on the first one, which a girl who just rough life and drugs and now she's in medical school. So it's this whole story of, I don't know where it's going to end up, but they're cool. all just inspiring stories. Good. Very well, cool. she seems, she seems like a really warm person. Yeah, I think you know, so. And, and it's not like you're interviewing a head of state, you know, she's pretty, she's pretty easy to get along with. So yeah. I think. I think you'll be comfortable. Oh, you'll have a good time. It'll be fun. fun. And we, I'm interviewing her because we went to the same college. So I kind of put this thing together through the university. Um, so there'll be a lot to talk about what Virginia Tech was like in the 80s. <laughs> so, <laughs> so funny. It's a whole different world. Well, I guess I should probably hop off. Believe it or not, I have somebody who's bringing up a... Uh, a puppy. We have two German Shepherds and this is this would be our third. So she's bringing, wow. she's driving this dog up from San Antonio. It's a rescue. So we oh, have to see if it's going to fit. Right. So I have to secure everything in the house. It's raining. It's muddy. Oh. I have to get everything off of tail, tail height, you know, clear all the tables and everything. I have to dog proof the house before they get here. Well, good luck. I don't know how that goes. And thank you Thanks. again for doing this. Thank I really you. Yeah. It. And, and we'll talk perfect. soon too. Yeah, we will. Yes. All right, yes. Care. I look forward to that. Thanks okay. guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today on our Blab series, Get Seen, Be Heard. If you've missed any episodes, you can always find us at www.getseenbeheardtv.com backslash YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll always be notified when we upload a new episode.
We work together with clients, helping them combine social media and PR to get more customers and grow their business. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, visit us at www.soartoprofit.com. We have regular workshops where we combine our expertise and show you how to use social media and publicity to get seen and be heard. See you next week.